On October 20th, 1950, Thomas Earl Petty was born in Gainesville, Florida. In 1976, he formed the band Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Shortly after, while on a plane, Tom Petty read an article about a Florida spiritualist camp 103 miles southeast of his hometown. Although he had never been to this camp, he would go on to immortalize it forever in his song, Casadega. In 1978, Petty would first introduce this song to a live audience by saying, this is a town in Florida that has 35 acres of weird people. Before his death in 2017, Tom Petty had sold more than 80 million records worldwide, making him one of the top selling recording artists of all time. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our producers and our Patreons here on Esoteric Atlanta. If you would like to join our Patreon or our producer community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta, and today on this deep dive, we're going to be talking about Casadega, Florida. Today, Casadega is an unincorporated community in Volusia County, Florida. It is also considered today to be the psychic capital of the world. It lies on the eastern coast of the Florida Peninsula, just 110 miles south of Jacksonville and about 35 miles northeast of Orlando. Today, Casadega holds the Casadega Hotel a central auditorium, the Colby Memorial Temple, a library, a healing center, a bookstore, an educational building, and a wellness center. It also contains a fairy garden that seems very spectacular to me and very much reminds me of our very own Doll's Head Trail here in Atlanta. On March 14, 1991, Casadega, Florida was officially declared an historic landmark and an historic district. At present, the community is officially owned by a specific association of spiritualists. And in order to actually live in the vortex, and I do mean vortex because allegedly there is a particular very significant vortex in Casadega, Florida, the same as the likes of Stonehenge, you have to actually be a licensed and certified psychic medium to be able to claim residency in this town. In order to be certified as a psychic medium, this takes about four years of training and internships, and you have to be tested by the board of spiritualists and psychic mediums. But how did this little sleepy town come to be the psychic center of the world. Of course, when I found out about Casadega, Florida, I had to do my own deep dive to get the answer to my own little mystery. But before we get into the mystery itself and my deep dive, just a brief little word from our sponsors. This my Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired, after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left 
where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life, every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius 
genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows exactly where it needs to send the redox what part of your body is wounded what part of your body isn't so stable and so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be now of course with this redox gel you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go so today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck so I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes I personally in my experience automatically started to feel relief you can also use this as a beauty supplement too I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes friends I am 40 years old and as as the aging process does occur the body starts to droop a little bit and no I've never had children so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child but they still are you know I got boobs and they 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 they're, they're starting to sink a little bit I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because you know they grew at some point when I was a child so I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest and not only have I noticed a difference but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well my boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head as he is in his 50s now he has started to notice thinning of the hair as most men do around that age in their lives and he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. As you guys know, I am kind of a magnet for spirits and ghosts. There's no, no mystery as to why I wanted to look at the mystery of Casadega because I myself, for better or for worse, whether I like it or not, always attract paranormal phenomenon. What can I say? I'm very, very popular with the dead folk.
Now, again, I've been very honest on my channel about my struggles with this gift, curse, whatever you want to call it. But I will say another added benefit to ASEA is that it's actually really helped me with grounding myself in order to put up boundary when, boundaries when it comes to the spiritual world. Now, yes, ASEA is a redox system that typically helps the body rebuild itself with cellular signaling and communication. But this is just something I've noticed for me. That the more my body, the healthier my body is, the more grounded I am within my body, the better off my boundaries are. Pasadega, Florida was founded by a man named George Colby. In one of the lectures that I listened to involving the history of George Colby and Casadega, they and the, the presenter made the joke that George Colby was probably one of the first snowbirds in recorded history. If you're not from the United States or you are not from the Southeast, you probably don't know what a snowbird is. A snowbird is the slang word, a slang phrase down here in the Southeast that refers to somebody from the North who comes to the South to escape the hard winters. Florida is notorious, the magnet for snowbirds. And with these spiritualist camps, especially the one in Lilydale, New York, which we will briefly speak about, they typically had to have seasons. Of course, if you're up in the New England area or Canada or any type of cold climate, in the 1800s, you're probably not going to want to go stay at a spiritualist camp in the dead of winter. So a lot of these spiritualist camps would be open when the weather was appropriate for people to come partake in the festivities at the camp. So as Lilydale, New York would most likely be open in the summertime, the spiritualist camp in Florida and Casadega therefore was open in the winter time. Therefore, George Colby definitely was probably the first snowbird in our recorded history. George Colby was born on the 6th of January in 1848 in Pike, New York. Colby was born to a very, very religious and devout Baptist family. Now, if we step back a little bit and look at what was happening in the 19th century in general, we see a lot of chaos, a lot of luster, a lot of confusion when it comes to religion. We see tent revivals happening everywhere. We see the forming of the Mormon church happening. There was a lot going on, including the development of spiritualism, which we will get into. George was the middle of five children. He had two sisters and two brothers. According to the history books, his sisters did die young before the age of 10, which is very, very sad, but unfortunately was was more common in, in that day to have to lose a child. At the age of eight years old, George and his family moved to Minnesota. And this became the catalyst of George's evolution of a person. This would be what would kind of turn George into the George Colby that he became. You see, in the Baptist faith, they baptized by dunking. I grew up Presbyterian. We baptized by having a little water sprinkled on our head as young babies. And there's different reasons why different churches decide to baptize at different ages and in different means. The reasoning why some churches like the Presbyterian Church baptize right away is because historically, a lot of babies did not live very long. They, they died early. And so parents over the course of time would frantically want to get their kids baptized just in case their life was cut short. Now, in our modern times, it's not really something we have to worry about, but still that tradition has continued. In the Baptist faith, they believe that a person needs to be able to consent and want to get baptized. And they also believe in full dunking, just like the way John the Baptist allegedly baptized Jesus by dunking him into the river. That's kind of like along the lines of what the Baptists still to do to this day. Most Baptist church in our modern times have kind of like a pool behind the pulpit for those who aren't weren't raised Christian. 
and they open up and dunk people in. I've been to a few Baptist baptism. It is a full body immersion of water. Well, obviously, in the mid 19th century, they didn't have the modern technology of a heated pool like we do in 2023. And so George Colby, now some of the records say he was eight years old. So immediately after the family moved to Minnesota, some records say 12 years old. So four years after the family had moved to Minnesota, regardless in that time phrase of, of young, young childhood, George Colby made the decision to be baptized. And of course, again, as I said, his family was Baptist. So that me meant that George Colby was going to be fully submerged and dunked into water for his baptism. Now, if anybody is from Minnesota, Minnesota, or has been up that way, it's very cold in the wintertime. Minnesota is known to be a very, very cold state. Lots of snow, lots of freeze. And so the story goes that the day that George Colby was baptized, he was baptized in a river that was extremely cold, almost too cold. This means that George was almost killed by his own baptism. They say that he had was severely injured, I guess, by the cold and, and definitely had hypothermia and it literally almost killed him. Now, personally, I don't know if that part of the story was added on over time to kind of exaggerate the folklore around George Colby or if it's true or not. Because as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of, of ice baths and cold showers and cryotherapy. And when someone is baptized, they're literally dunked in and then taken right back out again. And people can sit in an ice bath for up to 10 minutes before they're taken out. You do cryotherapy, you're taken out at like three minutes. And this is very cold. So again, I don't know if this story is necessarily true or an embellishment of, of true events. He, he might have been baptized at this age, but maybe didn't have some near-death experience. Although he could have, I don't know. But I just wanted to clarify... I'm not sure if that part of the story is actually, I have my suspicions that might be an embellishment, but whatever. Regardless of the fact, coming to Minnesota with his Baptist family, getting baptized, this is when stuff started shifting for George Colby. Because around this time, some of George Colby's deceased relatives started talking to him. Now, I can understand why people would want to say, oh, there must have been a near-death experience to cause this. But that's not necessarily true. Some people are just born with their abilities. And as they get into adolescence, they start to understand that they even have abilities. A young child might see grandpa standing in the corner playing with him and not realize that their mother or their father don't actually see grandpa standing there. Young children don't really understand death. And so there is a possibility from my perspective that George Colby was born with these abilities and that they just enhanced when he became an adolescent and adolescence and they enhanced because all of a sudden he started to understand that he was seeing things that other people were not. I hope that makes sense. But regardless, around the age of 12, George Colby started communicating with past loved ones. Now, of course, mediumship is probably not the career that good old farming Baptist parents want for their son. However, it goes, the story goes that George's deceased loved ones he started communicating with did tell George that his destiny was to be a healer and was to be a psychic. So as the story goes, from the age of 12 to 19, George started to work on his abilities in secret, really honing in his ability to understand the spiritual world and to see beyond the veil. And for those that might be skeptical of this, or for those who are new to communicating with, with loved ones or any type of entity on the other side of the veil, it does take practice. It does take training. And so the fact that he was able to kind of do this on his own is, is pretty mar miraculous in, in my humble opinion, because it is kind of scary, even though I attract ghosts and I laugh about it. it, it it's not, it's not the most convenient thing in the world. And it does take a lot to learn how to like put your boundaries up and understand what it is you're being told. 
But his training obviously worked because by the age age of 19, George Colby was a bit of a local celebrity. He was booking people out left, right, and center, people wanting to come to him for help. He was what we call a trance medium. So basically, what a trance medium is, and I'm quoting from the Arthur Finley College, a trance mediumship occurs when through the induction of altered states of consciousness, we allow the spirit world to capture our attention or even place a hold on our minds, enabling a closer binding with the spirit world. So basically, George would go into a bit of a trance. A bit sounds a bit like our old friend Edgar Casey, who was also kind of working around this time period. He would go into a trance and he would use his spirit guides. We all have guides. All of us. We all got guides. So he would use his spirit guides to kind of communicate with other people's spirit guides so that he could speak the information that he was being to told. So basically, George was like a conduit for the every everyday average human to be able to get information from their, their team, as we call it today. And again, he became very popular. He was making a lot of money. He was selling out. So obviously, you know, if you're a shitty medium, if you're you're not going to have a good business, right? People are going to, word's going to spread that you don't know what you're talking about. But obviously, he kind of knew what he was doing because he was generating a lot of traction. And so at the age of 19, around this time, he decided to officially leave the Baptist faith, the Baptist church, and join the spiritualist movement. So in 1867, George Colby is officially now part of the spiritualist spiritualist movement and religion. So what actually is the spiritualist religion? Spiritualism was a social religious movement in the 19th century, according to which an individual's awareness persists after death and may be contacted by the living. So as I said in, in the beginning, around this time period, the 19th century, historically, there was just a lot happening when it came to people's religious beliefs. We had a lot of tent revivals going on. We had the forming of the Mormon church. There was a lot of, you know, we're coming up to the industrial revolution. So people's, anytime there's like a huge shift in consciousness, people are probably most likely going to start to question their own mortality. Who are we really as people? And it's weird to me to think about spiritualism as being an actual religion, because I feel like most people I feel like what's kind of happened in our lifetime is that we've kind of come full circle back. I think most people, regardless of the religion that they were born into, do believe that the soul is an eternal thing and that life exists after death. I don't even think you have to be religious to believe that. After all, from a scientific perspective, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transmuted. So something's going to happen to that energy in the body after death. This is also very, very, very much part of the Eastern teachings, the Vedic texts, the Yoga Sutras, as we've spoken about many times on this channel. And it's interesting now, I feel like in our modern eyes, you can be like a Christian and also be a spiritualist or Jewish and a spiritualist. I feel like we are a little bit more, um, there's more blurred lines, I guess, within our own modern day culture where we, we don't see things as being mutually exclusive. But of course, if you think about the spiritualist movement of the 19th century, you've got Blavonsky, you've got the Fox sisters, you've got the, you know, the massive cultural acceptance of things like seances. People were really, really digging this stuff. And of course, if you've been on this channel for a while, you will know we've spoken a lot about the Hess Act. And so if we're looking at the build of what was happening in the 19th century, almost every human being was touched by the spiritualism. People started to understand astrology again, divination again, seances, and it, it was in the Hess Act in World War II in the mid 20th century or early 20th century where Hitler and the Catholic Church decided to create a propaganda piece making divination of the devil so that we would lose um, all that education, all that knowledge of being able to communicate with beings that are not within our own physical reality. Now, I do want to give a disclaimer here, as I've done many times on my show, but if you're new here, I just want to give a huge disclaimer. Spirit, being a spiritual person versus the spiritualism religion 
if you are a spiritual person working on your own spirituality, that actually has nothing to do with talking to guides or ghosts or spirits or dead people or whatever. That's just communication. To be a spiritual person, that means you're working on your own spirit. But in order to be a spiritual person, you have to actually believe in the in the in the dogma of spiritualism, which is that you have a soul and your soul is eternal. We're all eternal beings, right? I hope that makes sense. So as I said, George is now officially a spiritualist. He's already got a reputation for being a good, very good spiritualist, very talented spiritualist. So he's traveling around in a horse and carriages to all these towns in the Midwest and all up and over the, the country, seeing people, treating people. This is how he is making his living. And in 1875, at the age of 27, while Colby was in Iowa, he received a new guide by the name of Seneca. Now, Seneca apparently was a Native American guide, and he would go on to become George's main guide and the leading force behind the Casadega, Florida Spiritualist Camp. Now, I do want to point out that this was the age 27. Um, and if you know, that's when you get your first Saturn return is at the around the age 27 to 30. So around the age 27 to 30, if you think back at your life around that age, for me, I moved from Los Angeles back to Atlanta. There's usually a lot of really crazy things that start happening to people at their Saturn returns. It's like, you know, Saturn is the planet of Father Time. It's the planet of of karma and so it's it's really like kind of a, a transition for a lot of people is that Saturn return there's a lot of upheaval in people's lives so I thought it was interesting when I did the math that Seneca popped up around Colby's Saturn return Seneca informed George that he needed to travel to Wisconsin to pick up another medium by the name of T.D. Giddings Together, they were instructed to travel by rail to the end of the line in Florida, which was Jacksonville at that time. After that, they were instructed to search out a plot of land by foot that matched the land Seneca described. Seneca told Colby that he would recognize this land because there would be seven small hills around some bodies of water like lakes. Now, I, I saw some conversations in my research where people who were not from America or were not from the Southeast were very confused by Florida having hills. I understand how that would be confusing for people because I think when we think of Florida, we really see pictures of like South Florida, which is very flat, you know, lots of palm trees. But North Florida around Jacksonville, around this area, is still very much part of the the fall off of Appalachia. And so you do have a lot of hills, a lot of pine trees, even though it's very hot and there's a beach there. It's kind of like got some of that Georgia deep wood feel to it. Once they found the appropriate land, they were instructed to create a camp there for spiritualists to all come together and work together. In 1880, Colby files for the homestead grant that would become Casadega. In 1884, four years later, the grant is approved with about 75 acres of land. And then in 1893, the official National Spiritualist Association of Churches is formed. In the same year of 1893, George Colby would travel up to experience the first kind of convention that they would have after being officially formed as a religion. And there he would meet a lot of uh, movers and shakers, people with some money that are going to help him really, really bring Casadega, Florida together to help him build up the camp. And a year later in 1894, Casadega was officially, officially ready to go. Casadega at this point would become the second most populated spiritual camp in the United States, second only to Lilydale, which again was up in New York. And Lilydale itself had a lake called Casadega. So there is some whisperings that maybe George got the name from the lake, but there's also another explanation as to why or where he got the name Casadega. 
Casadega also means the rocks beneath the water. And it was this particular water at this particular lake that cured Colby of tuberculosis. Because you see, during this time, Colby ended up getting very sick. Tuberculosis was a terrible, terrible sickness that I think most of us are familiar with because it did kill a lot of people. At this point, when he got sick, Colby was once again traveling around being a medium, trying to build up excitement, anticipation about this new spiritualist camp. And it was Seneca that told Colby that in order to heal his tuberculosis, he needed to go back down to the homestead in Florida and drink from this particular lake. He also needed to inhale the pine needle smoke of burning pine needles. Again, this was this is found in North Florida, not necessarily South Florida, but these pine trees are found in this area which pine needles are also a cure nowadays for these things. Interesting, right? Thought it was kind of interesting myself. And we also know in this area around the Jacksonville area, Casadega area, that there's a lot of folklore around Ponce de Leon and his fountain of youth, the, the water. There's also many, many um, healing fountains, which I do, I've been to some of them and I do plan on covering a lot of the healing fountains that are in this area as well well i've been to them they're actual fountains so the mystery isn't if they're there or not they are there i've been in them it's just whether they actually have healing properties or not so all these folklores around Ponce de Leon and the Fountain of Youth and all that kind of stuff, it's all kind of, you know, everything's adding up. Like there's something here, right? Obviously, that's why I love folklore so much. Folklore doesn't come from nothing. Darkness can't create anything. Only the light can create. So where is the truth in this folklore? Is there something very special about the waters and the springs of this area? I think so, because as you guys know, if you've been on this channel for a while, I believe that this area is actually the real Egypt. If you haven't been on this channel for a while and you're just now watching this, that might be shocking to hear me say, but stick around for a while, hit that subscribe button, and you over time will probably see a lot of those videos, videos pop up where I talk about this actually being the real Egypt. And as I said in the beginning, allegedly there's a vortex in this town, the likes of Stonehenge. They still talk about that even in 2023. So there's obviously something very magical about this place. George Colby never married. He stayed single for the rest of his life, but he did adopt a lot of children. Seven to be exact, six boys and one girl. When Colby passed away, he was buried in a nearby cemetery that has its own folklore and, and mystery and magic to it, which we will be covering on Monday Mystery. But nonetheless, after his passing, the community of Casadega has continued to be in existence. It is a very sleepy, small town, and it is technically open during the winter time. Although in the state of Florida, you can pretty much go anytime and find a licensed psychic medium there. Just so you guys know, me and a couple other people on YouTube are planning a trip down there as soon as we can when it's open and booming so we can get tours and interviews for you guys to actually see this with your own two eyes. So with that being said, please let me know down in the comment section below if you have ever been to Casadega, Florida or Lilydale or any of these other spiritualist camps. Please let me know your thoughts and your opinions. And of course, always be nice to each other and be looking out for our Monday mystery where we talk about the cemetery where George Colby was buried and the folklore and mystery surrounding that particular burial plot. All right, you guys, have a wonderful day.